Hi, this is Dave Portfleet from the web team. Today we're going to talk about Google Analytics. First things first, you need access to Google Analytics and you can request that by filling out a form in the CMS Admin. So if I click on this tab here, this is the CMS4 administration area. But on the left hand side under More, you'll see Analytics Request. And you just fill out a valid Gmail address. I do need a valid Gmail email address and not the gvsu.edu email address since Google, the only way I can give you access to analytics is with a Gmail address. So if you haven't created one yet or you don't already have a Gmail address, just visit gmail.com and you can set one up. So why would you want to look at Google Analytics for your site? There's a lot of good reasons, but the best reason is to understand how your visitors are using your site and to actually present them with the information they actually care about and not what you or someone in your department may think that people care about. Um, the stats really open your eyes to what people are searching for. So a great example of this is the web team used Google Analytics quite extensively for the redesign of the Grand Valley homepage in 2012. And I'm going to click on this tab and I just have some information here from analytics on why we decided to redesign the homepage. This first one we just saw mobile visits uh, skyrocketing. We saw a 500% growth over two years. The, the current homepage was viewable on mobile devices but certainly could be more usable. And then we also looked at the different devices that were visiting the Grand Valley homepage. Here we see Android and iPhone, iPod, iPad, it goes on. So we know devices with small screens are visiting the site. And even more, we can dig deeper and find out the actual size of those screens. And we see 320 by 480 was one of the most popular screen sizes, second to desktop, of course. Um, but I mean, almost half a million visits here, we know we're getting a lot of traffic with small screens. So we knew we needed to redesign the site to work better with small screens. Here's another thing we did, and we can help you out. Some of this is built into Google Analytics as well. It's not quite as pretty, but uh, this is heat mapping, so we can actually see where people are clicking on the site. Um, and just a quick glance, you'll see that uh, Quick Links is a hot spot. That's actually to drop down this entire menu. But the most popular three spots were My Blackboard, My Blackboard again, Email, and Banner are quite uh, visited a lot and if we go dig in some deeper pages on the home off the home page you'll see my banner blackboard and email again are clicked quite a bit stats built right into analytics um, besides just looking at analytics though we also looked at the search terms um, this is actually in analytics um, as well and I could show you that in a minute so we looked at what people were searching for uh, the words and the phrases um, this can kind of uh, give us a better idea of maybe how people are having struggling with something, either clicking through or seeing a link, so they just go right to search, although uh, more and more people just search now. So uh, some of these need to be incorporated with some other data to really understand what's going on. And then we did a survey. So this is outside of analytics. Uh, we just asked people how they use the website was one of the many questions we asked. but. You can see right here, check email, log into Banner, log into Blackboard. So we're seeing some patterns, both in Analytics and outside. People are using it for email, Banner, and Blackboard. So our next phase was we sketched up um, what we thought this might look like on paper, and then we actually built a prototype. Uh, so one of the biggest changes in the design was uh, it's mobile friendly. So when you resize the browser, it actually um, uses something called responsive design, so content shifts and um, things scale so it looks great on any size device but just to touch back on analytics we saw you know blackboard banner and email being clicked a thousand times more than anything else so we actually incorporated those into the home page there are these buttons or icons in the top right there's blackboard banner and email so that's just one of the few things that really helped us make a design decision on on the grand valley homepage. okay so let's jump into analytics 
when you first log in, it'll be google.com slash analytics. And when you log in, you may see a page that looks like this. Just click access Google Analytics from the top right. And you'll get a list of all the sites you have access to. In my case, it's quite a bit. Um, I'm clicking this star that's just my favorited sites. Um, this will probably be what you see, just gvsu.edu. You can just click on that to get into the stats. So we come to this screen, and the first thing we see is stats for the entire university. So the very first step is you're going to want to filter this down to just see statistics for your website. And to do that, you just click this arrow right here in the left. And then you click Create New Segment. And then you're going to want to come down here to Conditions, which is listed under the Advanced title, and we're going to change we're going to change this first drop down here, Add Content. Uh, we're going to change that to the word Landing Page, and actually, if you just start typing the word Landing, you'll see the list filters down to anything that starts with the word Landing, and we can just choose Landing Page here. Second drop down, we're going to keep contains in the drop down and then this text area this is where we're going to type in the URL of your website not the whole URL just the slash part after the gvsu.edu so we can type in slash library and you'll see these pop up as I start to type them so this would be for the entire library site um, but I actually could just look at stats for some of the pages within the library site so you see library slash database.htm comes up or hours. Um, so this can be done for any site at Grand Valley. I can do slash IT, uh, slash FTLC. Um, you'll see they all just pop up. So let's use the library one. And if your site doesn't come up for some reason, this is it, you can just type it in. So it's just slash the department URL and then slash. And that's it. So most of them will come up. Uh, let's do the library, for example. And then once we're done creating the conditions for the advanced segment, we just click Save down here. And don't forget to name the segment. So we're going to call this Library Test for now. And then click Save. So now I'm seeing just the statistics for the library site. I filtered out all the other Grand Valley stuff. And you can tell this by looking at right next to the arrow that we used earlier. Just to the right of it, this is the advanced segment that's turned on. Um, I actually can turn on multiple segments. These are all the ones I've ever created. But this is how you know that you're just looking at a segment and not the entire site as a whole, the entire Grand Valley site. I do want to point out this little yellow box here on the right hand side. Um, this says this report is based on number of visits, percent of visits. So this is um, Google's attempt at trying to guesstimate your traffic if you have a site that gets very little traffic. So uh, the library gets pretty significant amount of traffic so these numbers are going to be pretty accurate. But you can make these numbers more accurate by clicking this little grid icon and you can slide this to higher precision. Uh, by default, Google Analytics keeps it right in about in the middle just for faster processing so you're not sitting here waiting for this data to get crunched. Um, so if you move this to a higher percentage or higher precision and let go, it'll actually, the numbers may change a little bit. Um, they change just slightly on the library site. Um, so we're getting a little bit more accurate picture here now. I will touch base on this in a little bit, but um, as we go through this, if Google Analytics is too uh, overwhelming or maybe just too robust for what you're trying to do, um, we have some tools here at Grand Valley that you can use that just show very simple statistics um, for links or pages, and I'll get into that, but it's just gvsu.edu s, and that's a short URL creator, and once you create the short URL, we show very simple statistics. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I'll touch base on that at the end of this presentation, but I just want to let you know as we go through this if it just seems like a lot of data and a lot of things to look at that we have a much simpler version that we offer. 
Okay, so now we can start looking at stats for the library site. Uh, if I scroll down, the first view I get here is visits over time. And we can look at this in an hourly grid or a daily or weekly or monthly. So hourly looks a little bit more jagged. Weekly, we start to see some bigger trends. And monthly, we only actually have this defaulted to 30 days. So that's another thing to know. If you scroll to the top right, you'll see that the date range is always defaulted when you first log in to the past 30 days. And you can change this to any range you'd like. So let's go back a few months. I'm going to pick a, a date back here, September 1st, and then we'll go to, uh, let's say, February 12th. And then I can just hit Apply. So now we're going to see the stats for those months that I've chosen. And you can see some pretty big trends here. Um, some pretty steady traffic, and then a, a little bit of a, looks like, a boom of traffic right before exams, and then a big drop off for the Christmas break. So um, kind of nice. You can already see some get at some ideas of uh, the traffic on your site just from this simple graph. So if we scroll down below the graph, we'll see some other stats. Um, and you can hold your cursor over any of these terms at any point to get full descriptions of what these mean. But uh, we. Visits are the amount of times your website has been accessed. Um, it consists of several interactions over an amount of time. So I could come to the site, click 10 things, and I will be a single visit. But if I come back maybe 30 minutes later or 8 hours later and interact again, that's considered another visit. Uh, visits are usually about 20 to 30 minutes long of a session, um, and then when somebody comes back again, it's considered another visit. So if I were to come back for multiple visits in a single day, I'm still just one visitor. That's why this unique visitors number is lower. Um, this is just um, counting unique people. And the last one is page views. So if we go back to the first example I gave, if I come to the site and I click 10 different links or click around on 10 different pages, I come back later and I click 10 more pages, uh, that's actually 20 page views. So that's why you'll see the page views number is pretty high compared to visits. And then you'll see that defined here in pages per visit pretty clearly. Uh, each visit consists of about 2.73 page views. So that's why that page view numbers is about three times as big as the visits number. Um, this is interesting, average visit duration. You can see how long people are spending on your site. Five minutes is a pretty significant time. Um, that means they're pretty engaged with the content. This could be good or bad. Uh, if you have a lot of content that you want them to read, that's great. This also can mean that they're spending a lot of time trying to find the information they need. Um, so this number could be um, positive or negative. Bounce rate, that means they've come to the site and left immediately. That means they didn't interact with any of your pages at all. They came to a page on your site and went to another completely different website. 45% is not terrible. Um, when you see numbers up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, um, that's when you want to be concerned. Of course, this number can be good and bad again. Uh, there's many pages. The example I give is the human resources, the benefits page. You land on that page, and there's a list of links to various areas of other sites to get to the benefits information. So the bounce rate for that page is quite high, but your visitors are getting the exact thing they need. They're getting the link they need, and then they're leaving the page. So again, bounce rate can be positive or negative. Um, I would probably lean towards, it's usually more negative though. If you see that very high, you might want to look at the pages and understand why they're leaving. And the last stat down here is new visits. Uh, if we look off to the right, this pie chart, we see a majority of the people to the library site are returning visitors, which I think makes good sense. Um, 13, almost 14% are new visitors. Uh, this, again, another stat that can be good or bad. If you want people to be engaged and come back, then you obviously want your return visitor quite high. If you're looking for new traffic and new visitors and a new audience all the time for different things, um, you'll want your new visitor numbers to be a little bit higher.
So that's just the audience overview page. Um, this is probably going to be some good information for a lot of people, and you can actually have this report sent to you weekly or whoever you'd like. And if you do go up to the top left here, you can simply email this report, um, and you put in the to address, and you can actually specify the frequency. Um, you can get it in a multiple different formats, but I would choose PDF. This makes it in a nice pretty view, just exactly like we're seeing here with the graphs. And then you could choose the frequency if you want it weekly, monthly, quarterly, and choose what day of the week you get it on. And if you want to send it to multiple people, you can put their email separated by a comma and then put another email. This is great for um, a lot of folks. This is very good information on a weekly basis. Just keeps an eye out for what's going on on your site. If you don't want to email it, you can actually just export this view immediately right here just by clicking export and we can do PDF. Uh, if we want the stats in more of a tabular format, we can do an Excel spreadsheet. Um, there's a lot of different options. Okay, we're going to work our way down the left hand side. So right now we're on audience overview. Um, the tab actually above this is real time information. Uh, if I click that, you'll see, I want you to notice that it says this segment is turned on right now, library test. And if I click overview under real time, there's no indication that I'm in that segment anymore. So there's a couple spots in analytics where um, these left hand navigation don't correspond to the segment and real time information is one of those. So we're looking at the stats for the entire university right now. But if I go back to audience overview, you'll see that the library test segment is back in place and we're looking at just library stats. So just something to take note of, make sure you always see this in the top left to make sure you're just looking at the stats for your area. All right, so we're gonna, like I said, just continue down the left-hand side here. The next one is demographic information. Uh, if we click overview, you're gonna see some information on gender and age. Now this might seem a little big brother-ish, but they're grabbing information from uh, Google Ads and Google Plus, and they're actually grabbing some information from third-party cookies, so some stuff may be coming from other social media like Facebook. Uh, so you can see, it's very simple, uh, the, the age range of folks visiting your site and gender. Uh, the next one down is interests. If we go to the interest overview, um, we've discovered this isn't the most accurate information. This is grabbing information from, again, those social media sites, but some of these aren't defined so well. We actually did a test on the web team and none of these interests applied to anything about any of us. So I'm not sure this is totally hashed out with Google uh, yet, but you can take a look at what people have defined as their interest areas on social media. The next one down is geographic information. We can look at languages and location. Uh, so this is what their browser language is set to. So we see Eng English is the top three and then it continues on down. Um, I'm actually gonna go back to the top here and change this high precision back down to faster processing just so we can, uh, these graphs can get calculated a little bit faster. Maybe that was a little too far down. Let's do this. Uh, let's keep on going. Behavior is the next one. We touched a little bit on this, new versus returning. Um, same kind of pie chart we saw in the beginning. Frequency and recency is interesting if you're looking about engagement. We can see uh, the number of visits uh, that a person had on the site and the number of page views that individual had. So uh, people that come to the site one time uh, were quite popular actually. And then we see this little bit of a bell curve here. Um, so as people come to the site six, seven times, they visit less pages, probably because they know exactly where the information is they need. And then we see a curve back up where people come to the site over a few hundred times. Um, they are interacting with the site quite a bit. Engagement you can look at as well. Uh, we, we saw this number earlier, but this will tell you uh, how many visits uh, or the duration of the visit. Again, 
spread over between 0 and 10 seconds, 11 to 30 seconds. So we're seeing quite a bit of people that just spend 0 to 10 seconds on the site, which is about normal. Um, most people are going to jump from page to page to page and not spend more than 10 seconds on any given page. Next one down on the left is browser and operating system. This will tell you what browser and operating system they're using. Uh, so we see Chrome uh, is the number one browser visited on the library site, then Safari, then Firefox, and continue to break that down. The content management system works on all browsers, uh, all modern browsers, I should say. There are some old, old browsers that probably won't function on well. So many of you won't have to worry about what browser or operating system people are using to view your site. I'm going to jump down to mobile here. This one we find interesting. Uh, we like to look at how many people are on desktop versus uh, a phone versus tablet. So this one gets pretty interesting on the library site. And I'll show you one other thing. This is a kind of a table view of the data, which I don't really love. I like to actually see graphs. So you can do that by clicking these icons on the top right. I can switch to a pie chart or a bar chart anytime. And you can see desktop is ruling the library site. We have about 88% of folks going to the library site are on a desktop. Nine on mobile and 2% on tablet. This is actually quite uh, low for most sites at Grand Valley. We've seen the average is about 15 to 20% of visits are on mobile devices. So the library is a little bit of an exception there. You can also set up custom variables. We're not going to get into that. That's pretty detailed information. Um, just isn't enough time in this tutorial to go over that. So we're going to jump down to visitor flow. This one's pretty interesting. This actually shows you how individuals are flowing through your site. Um, for some reason, it defaults to country territory, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So again, we're going to type landing page and choose that from the drop down. And then we can see what page they came on, they landed on, and how they traversed through the site. And you can highlight any one of these routes by right clicking, oh, just clicking, left clicking, and say highlight traffic through here. So we can see that when people started on the home page, um, these are the next pages they went with. Their first interaction was the data databases page was number one. Some folks stayed on the home page. Uh, other people went to the how-to articles. Uh, this is can be very, very telling of what's going on on your site. We've seen um, some sites where a secondary page actually gets more traffic than the home page. That probably is an indication that that's what the information is people are seeking, so maybe you should make that a little bit more prominent on your home page. Uh, we also can see the drop-off. So of the 128,000 people that visited the library homepage, 51% uh, clicked through to something and 48% dropped off. A drop-off means they left that page. So already 48% are leaving the homepage. If we hold our cursor over any one of these other ones, we can see after they got to the databases page, 66% fell off and 33 continued to interact with the page. And it goes further to the right as well. You can see how they go through many different interactions. I will say that Google Analytics loves to change around this left menu. In fact, just a week ago, they changed all these tab names. Um, so this video might be outdated very soon. Uh, but a quick way to get to any of these pages or any of these areas of Google Analytics, uh, I've been using this top search bar quite a bit more. So if we wanted to find out um, mobile visits, I can just start typing the word mobile and you'll see audience mobile overview comes up and I can see that uh, mobile breakdown that we saw earlier very quickly. So just keep that in mind as I click around on these things on the left, they may get renamed or moved quite often. So a quick way to find any of these is to just simply do a search for it. acquisition. This is a brand new area in Google Analytics. Uh, this 
will be a little bit more helpful if you were to set up goals, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But here it's trying to combine, we can jump into any of these areas individually. Um, and this area, this overview, is actually trying to combine a couple sets of data to give you a better understanding of what's going on on your site. So we can see of the people that did an organic search, meaning they were on Google or Yahoo and just typed in some words and ended up on the library page, they then visited this many pages and converted to your goals this many times. A lot of data to try and understand in one view, um, but hopefully once we dig into each one of these areas individually, um, you'll get a better understanding of these kind of combined overview uh, data grids a little bit better. Back down on the left under acquisition I'm going to click channels. This was showing up in that overview screen. This is just the channels. Channels are how they got to your site. Uh, so we see organic search is number one. This is actually great to see this. Uh, this means they're typing a word in a search engine and ending up at the site. Um, the only thing you can ask for better is more direct traffic this means that they typed in the URL directly into their browser and came right to the site. Um, this means people know your site address and come to it directly. Uh, they can either type it in directly or go to it from a bookmark. Referral means it's coming from another site. Uh, that could be any different site that's mentioning the library site or Grand Valley. Uh, social, this means coming from things like Twitter, Facebook, um, and email, if you have an email campaigns, that's how many came from email. And other, um, I don't know what's another actually. I've never looked at this. Buffer. Well, that's not very helpful. Yeah. So that's one I don't know about. So a nice way to understand where people are coming from. I think all traffic is going to be a very similar view. This breaks it down a little bit more. Um, instead of just saying organic, um, we see Google organic or Bing organic or Yahoo organic. So just kind of breaking that down a little bit further. We see referrals from the different sites and different social media as well. All referrals, again, a very similar view. This is just going to take out search engines. So we're just going to see the sites people came from. Now, campaigns are a great way to track any type of marketing you're doing for your site. Uh, we'll, we'll see many in here right now. We actually are building campaign tracking into every email newsletter that goes out through CreateSend here at Grand Valley. So we're going to see some campaigns uh, being tracked here. But if you want to build your own campaign tracking, you create a special URL. And to do that, uh, this is how I do it. I go to Google and I search for a campaign URL builder. And it's number one right here. So it's gonna ask for a few things. Some are required, some are optional. Uh, the first one is the website address that we're going to. So if this is an individual page on your site, their example is urchin.com slash download. Uh, this could be the library.com or gvcu.edu slash library slash, slash databases.htm. This is a way, uh, like if we were to advertise the camp, the databases page, let's say in non-traditional advertising or even online advertising, um, we can see where these things are coming from. So the first thing will be campaign source. So for this example, let's say I'm putting a banner ad on mlive.com for the library databases page. So my campaign source would actually probably be MLive. The campaign medium would be banner or banner ad. Um, campaign term and content, you can specify these if you'd like. If you have multiple banner ads, let's say, and some use different terms or different content, um, we can define what's in each banner ad here. But I'm just going to pretend we're just running one ad. And finally, the campaign name, we are going to call library databases. That's it. And then I'm going to hit submit. Oh, I have to enter the URL of the database site. 
and then hit submit. And you'll see I get a URL right here. And I can copy this. And when I contact MLive to run my banner ad, I can say this is the link I would like them to use to link to my site. So this way, if I'm giving out banner ads to MLive or Wood TV8 or anybody, um, I can create different unique tracking URLs here. And I know exactly how many people came from each source. And then I can even break that down to see what they did on the site. We can even see their gender, age, what browser they're using, if they're on a phone. Uh, we see all kinds of stats broken down by campaign. So this is a very nice way to track marketing. Campaigns, we have keywords, um, paid versus organic. So if you have any Google AdWords, you can see how they're performing here. We don't have any for the library. Uh, we can see organic keywords, which should look pretty good here. Um, since we saw a lot of organic traffic, we can see the words that people are typing in the search engines. Uh, not provided just means that term they typed in their search was not passed on to analytics. So for whatever reason, it wasn't passed. Uh, but then we can see the breakdown of the other terms people are using. Library, library hours, GVC library, it goes on and on. This can be very eye-opening too. Um, this can help you understand if people are not able to find certain things. Uh, I believe not too long ago when the library hours were a little bit buried and they weren't so prominent on the homepage of the library site, uh, the library hours term was searched a lot. Uh, it was probably number one. So this helps you understand where people are trying to get to and where they're having trouble getting to. Help you understand the terms people are using. Um, we've seen this quite often at the university. There's lots of acronyms we throw around all the time. Sometimes some of the jargon we use ends up on web pages and content. Uh, and you'll see the terms people are using may be different than those acronyms that you're using. So pay attention to these words because this is what people are typing in. You should be using these words on your site. On the left is cost analysis. Not going to make a lot of sense here. This is if you have uh, paid AdWords, you can see how those are performing. Uh, again, AdWords has a whole set of links associated with it. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, we can see social media breakdown. This one's pretty interesting. Uh, I just clicked overview and we can see what media platforms are most popular. Uh, we can see Facebook is winning by quite a bit. So Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, LinkedIn, it goes on and on. Uh, you'll see some numbers up here associated with visits. This is uh, using any type of goals, and I know we haven't got into it, but you can set up a value for your goal. So if you said for each visitor that lands on the databases page, that's worth $1 to us, um, you can define that. So then you can see kind of a, a return on investment for your social media campaigns. The rest of the social media links are a breakdown, uh, kind of digs deeper into social media. Uh, search engine optimization is going to be very similar to what we saw for the search keywords. Um, if we come back up to the top here, interesting, you'll see we actually lost our advanced segment. So this is one of those areas of Google Analytics that does not apply to segments. We're looking at the stats for the entire university. So this is not going to be very helpful right now. Uh, again, analytics is always changing. So some of these areas will be segment specific soon, I would imagine. But right now, it is not. So that will be this whole search engine optimization category, which is new. Um, none of these apply to advanced segments, unfortunately. So the next tab down is behavior. Let me just collapse these other tabs so we can see what we're looking at here. We have a behavior flow. Actually, we'll click overview first. This is going to look a lot like the audience overview page with page views over time, unique page views, bounce rates, exit um, page percent, which I don't think was on the first one. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, again, a very similar view. If we scroll down. This is nice. We get to see the content, the top pages on the site. There's a there's always 10 different ways to find information in Google Analytics. 
but of course it's on the overview page so we can see the most popular page is library. Uh, if you see just a slash, that's actually your home page as well. I am not sure why Google Analytics doesn't combine these numbers, but if you add these together, this will be your home page traffic. And then the databases page is number two or three here. Um, and we can see the continued breakdown of most popular pages on the library site. Behavior flow. Uh, we've kind of already went over this. This was um, visitor flow before. Um, this one actually defaults to landing page, so we can see the same type of flow through the site. Site content, we just saw this on the overview page, but we'll get a list of all the pages on the site and how often they're visited. And you can always go down here on the bottom right and see more rows. So it defaults to 10, we can go 25 or 50, so we can see lots and lots of pages. Content drill down, drill down, landing page. Um, all this is very similar information. Landing page is the page that they came in on. So this is a little bit different, even though the databases page got more traffic, more people came in on the hours page. So uh, you can deduct your own information from this. Uh, the next one down I like to look at is exit pages. This tells you what page they're leaving the most. Uh, this can be, again, good and bad. Uh, it depends on the page. If there's a page you really want people to be engaged with um, and they're leaving from it, that's probably not a good thing. But like my example earlier with the, the benefits site, um, people were finding the link they needed and leaving the page. So the exit page was very high. Uh, so again, just depends on the content. We see, again, this makes a lot of sense. The hours page probably is going to be a very top exit page along with the home page. Um, so again, I like to look at exit pages. It sometimes opens your eyes to a few engagement problems you might have. Uh, site speed, too helpful, um, but page timing might be. Uh, if I click page timings, you can see the individual pages and the amount of time it takes to load these. This, um, I don't, nine times out of ten, all your pages are going to load pretty fast if it's built in the content management system. Um, if you have lots of large images or you might even see some files in here that take a long time to download, like PDFs, um, this can help you understand if there's any areas of your site you can speed up. And again, if you're using the CMS, um, we keep that thing pretty speedy. So it'll just be the content you add. So again, photos or files. Site search will not apply to individual segments. Again, this is for the entire university because we have one search bar. So this will not be too helpful. Um, but you'll be able to see those terms that people are searching for in other areas that we saw earlier. Uh, events is another nice way to track what things people are doing on the page. This requires a little bit of coding, but uh, can get some really great information for you. Now this does apply to the segment, so the library doesn't have any events um, defined, although we defined one on the maps page, so we did get a few visits from the library to the maps page, and that's why you see some numbers here. But that little bit of coding I talked about will look like this. So when you're creating uh, links on your site, uh, hrefs and maybe in the code or even through the content management system, you've got to add just a little bit of code to it. And this is what it would look like. Oh, I apologize. This is the campaign uh, structure of the link. This down here is the event link structure. So this is normally what a link would look like. We see a href and then a link to the virtual tour page. Um, this is the structure of it, the one highlighted in yellow. Uh, so it's going to be an on-click event with um, a category, an action, and a label. And I break this down here. So this is what this link normally looks like, and this is what the link now looks like with an event tracking on it. So we write on click, and you can um, just type what you see here uh, with the. And the only thing you're going to change are the things in the single quotes here. 
and that would be the find page banners, which I, this is what I'm calling my category. The next is the action, which I'm calling a click, and the label, which I'm calling virtual visit. So maybe to show you the page that we're putting this on would be a little bit more helpful. So let's go to that page. Here's the page I'm tracking events on. It's our find campaign. So you may have seen these billboards around town or bus boards um, or any type of marketing. We actually wanted to know exactly what people are doing on this page. So if they clicked left and right on these arrows, if they played the video, if they clicked any of these blue links, if they played any of these videos, uh, or if they clicked any of these banners. So the example I just showed you was how I am tracking which one of these little square graphics people are clicking on and how often. So if I go back to the code, you see I have a category called find page banners and that is what I'm calling all these little graphics. Uh, I want to know which one is clicked uh, and I want to know what the label of that is. So in this case virtual visit we're tracking this first one. So again, there's 10 ways to find information in analytics. I could just go look at the virtual visit page statistics and see with the visitor flow how many came from this find page. Look at how this works. I'm going to go back to analytics and I'm going to remove the library segment and I'm going to just add the find segment. Um, this is just the find page. Actually, it doesn't look like that exists, so let's create a new segment really quick. Back down to conditions, change the, to landing page, and say contains slash find.htm. There it is. And we'll call that find, and we'll hit save. Uh, this campaign was running last summer, so let me change the date range real quick. Now let's go back to the beginning of the year just so we can make sure we grab all the information. And we come down here, we'll see that these are the number of clicks I received on the banners and the links on that page. And if we can click on any one of these to dig deeper, or we can also Right now it's defaulting to event action. I can say event label. And you can actually see the, the label of those um, banners. So the virtual visit actually got the most clicks. Way of tracking uh, events that happen within your page. You can also use um, in-page analytics here at the very bottom. This is kind of that heat mapping, um, but not as pretty as what we saw at the beginning. And this can take a while to load. What it does is it always starts out on the home page and sometimes it doesn't load. But there's not an easy way to get directly to the page you want to get to, so you actually have to click through and browse for it. So once the home page comes up, and assuming it worked, it wanted to load in a full screen view. Um, but I can't do that right now in this video. So uh, you can imagine the home page would be loaded right here and there would be little bubbles showing what percent gets clicked. You can show color and you'll see that red, orange, uh, green for areas that get more clicks and less clicks. Thing on the right is conversions. Uh, these all have to do with goals. So you'll have to set up a goal for this to work. And if we go, we set up uh, one of our goals as the admissions thank you page. This is after somebody's applied to the university. Uh, they get this page that thanks them for applying. Um, we set the goal up that as our goal. And you can define these uh, URLs by going to goal URLs here. Um, so what's nice is we can see kind of frames everything we are seeing here in analytics around a goal. So we know. Um, for instance, how many people of a certain age ended up at our goal page, or how much money we spent on ads relates back to how many people made it to this goal. Uh, we can see all kinds of different things. So having a goal in mind and setting it up, and it's simply a URL, a page um, on your site, can kind of give you a frame of 
what all this data and analytics really means to you. A real quick brief overview of analytics. Obviously, there's some more areas we can dive into. Um, again, I'm going to provide a link below to the gvcu.edu slash s, which is our short URL builder. And I'm going to do a separate video for that. But that might be a very nice way to track some links and pages on your site without having to go through and dig through all this information on analytics. It's, it's really robust and sometimes it's just a little too much for people. Just need something quick. So uh, again, check out the link below for that video and thanks again for watching.